fine too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so to start with, when you sign the paper, first one to come up with this, do you see the screen, right? You see my screen, okay. Yes, I see your screen. Okay, so the first one is called the disclosure reading regarding to real estate agency relationship. That means I will be your, I will be your agent for the buying the house and you will be my customer client to buy the house. And this first page is to do that. Uh, I need to do diligence. I need to help you to buy the house and anything I know, I need to let you know. So that's, that's what I have. And this page right here, you see the buyer. So you need to sign this paper, right? All you do is open the email and click that, that will, your name will be appear in the, in the text style and you'll be able to see that for you. Yeah, 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 I, I mean, I see that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I need to sign too, <clears throat> not just you, I need to sign right here too. So that this is the first one. And the second one is a fair housing and discrimination advisory. This means no discrimination. It doesn't matter what country, what race, what color, what religious, what, you know, all kinds of things. It doesn't matter, I, I need to serve you. I need to provide you the good service. So no discrimination, sexual orientation, gender, nationality, religion, me, uh, mar, m, m, marital status, citizenship, doesn't matter. I need to age, doesn't matter. I need to serve you. So no discrimination, that's basically what they say. So we need to sign this, the buyer and the seller both need to understand. So we all need to sign. Third one is a possible representation of more than one buyer or seller. So that means uh, I can be representing you to buy this house. I can be representing other people to buy this house, or I can representing other people to buy other house at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that's basically what it is. Okay. And we need to sign that too. There's an agent right here for me and for other agent. And this wire flood and uh, electronic funds, this is very important because when you transfer the money, now remember when we get acceptance, we need to pay 3%. 3% to start with, you can, cause you, your money is uh, 19 five, I think for 3%. Mm -hmm. So with that kind of money, it's quite, quite a lot. And uh, if you do wire transfer, I think it costs $30 to transfer, mm -hmm. but that's most effective and very safe way because the escrow company will contact you and give you the information how to transfer, how to wire the money. But that's the most effective way. But you can also write a check or you can go to your bank to write a cashier's check. Then mm -hmm. uh, that probably save you some money, but you still spend money in terms of check. But a bank, that check there's a way they accept very well because that would uh easily for them to transfer to the escrow company mm -hmm. so, so like either and then there account. will be a escrow account for you to write on the check and there will be title company in this case they they are republic title so you need to write republic title and they will be they will be the uh, escrow account number you want to write. And you also want to write the house address. So to triple make sure that you go to the same, exactly the place, the account that they designate for you to put the money in there. Same thing for the closing, they will give you the instruction how to do closing. You're going to pay a lot of money. You pay 130, 140, probably around that range of money. So you, you got to be, you gotta do wire. Don't, uh, or you can write a cashier's check. You can do, go to the bank to do, do the cashier's check and pay, go to the escrow company, is that address to pay to them? Or you can do wire, but wire costs $30. Oh, Basically I have per wire. 
I have a question. So yeah. uh, right now, the money, like some of the gift money, is in my dad and my brother account. So they have to do the same thing, or they wire, um, or they transfer to me, and then I wire it all to the um type of company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, uh, that's a process. That in this process, the loan officer Franco will be able to tell you. You know, you he first will ask you probably get the the gift letters from both your brother and your father. Mm -hmm. And then right, and then we, and after that is done, you can probably transfer the money. You can do it over the one time. You can do because you do three accounts. It's gonna be ninety dollars because each account is uh, thirty dollars transfer. Yeah. That is a lot of money. So once oh, yeah. the gift money is done, you can transfer to your account and ready yeah. to do it. And we we wanna. So that's that's basically what it is. Okay, so let's do this. And because uh, there's a lot of things to go over, so I want to go with you very uh, thoroughly, and then we need to have you to understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. Sure. And and so the account that will be transferred either through the ca cash cashier's check, you can the first time you can probably write a check, because uh, you know it takes time to have all the money to be transferred, mm -hmm. but because beginning you have time, so mm -hmm. that's fine. But after that, then you probably need to do the wire. That be safe or you can do the cashier's check. So that, and then the signature need to sign here. And right now that we come to this important part, this is a purchase agreement. Uh, we start today. I, I know it probably we cannot sign yes. So I put today's day and your name right here, the street we're purchasing. This is in Santa Clara County in San Jose. All the information right here. We uh, start with the 650,000. If they accept us, they would uh, sign a paper on this this form and send it back to us. That means they accept. So to start with, uh, we have uh, six hundred fifty thousand. We expecting anticipate to close November twenty five. That's Wednesday. One day after that is a twenty six November. That's a Thanksgiving day. So we want to close before Thanksgiving day so that either you can enjoy the Thanksgiving day with a new house. You can move in after you know the Wednesday Thanksgiving day. You can move in on Thursday with whole family celebrating or however you want to. But we want to do it before that day. Hopefully everything can be done so that we don't have no more problem. I mean, we don't. If uh, we cannot be done this day, then you'll be coming back December because they, they'll be taking days off. And uh, you know what I'm saying? There'll be because uh, there'll be a big holiday, four days in a row, mm -hmm. and then you know you could come back probably around December to close. Hopefully, we can do before Thanksgiving. So that's a, that's a shooting on that day, and do it as soon as possible. And uh, this is uh, the selling agent right here, real estate thirty eight, a buying agent right here. This is me, our company, mm -hmm. and. Uh, they also, there's a financial term right here. I say personal check, probably that's the best idea, but uh, 3% upon initiate, upon in the acceptance, the initial deposit 3% is 19.5. 19.5, you can write a check because uh, you have time to have that to be transferred. So you can write a check, that's not a problem. Or you can get cashier's check. So I have a question. So yeah. after like the acceptance, I have to send the deposit right away to the, to the to who to to the escrow company to the escrow company yeah escrow company so is that kind of like the like the three percent deposit or is that counting that's a three yeah that's correct that's correct yes that's a three percent deposit that is correct yes okay mm -hmm. so it is uh nineteen five so I think that that's good right so within three pieces that you see right here mm, I see so yeah we need to Usually people got acceptance, they pay right away to the uh, escrow company. Mm -hmm. they, they will contact you. They will contact you, send you the email and tell you how to do, how to transfer, how to send in the, the money. Or you can go by yourself personally, go to the, go to the company to deliver your check to them. Mm, and remember to get a receipt on them. Mm -hmm. Very important, get a receipt. So you pay and you have uh, evidence you pay, okay? Mm -hmm. This is very important. So next thing, uh, we don't have this, 
So we, we move on to what they have, what we have. Now we have a first loan. We only have this loan right now. So as we pay 20% and rest we borrow from the bank. So it's approximately this much. And then this will be convention financing. So yeah, we borrow for a conventional loan. So we do that. And the percentage right here, as soon as we get a pre-approval letter, I'll put down the percentage right here. I don't know if they're gonna put a percentage level, but we'll, we'll find out how much is the percentage level, the percentage let interest rate. So we can find out from there. And we don't have a second loan. So we, we're not HAB, HA, FFGA, first home time, first time home buyer loan. So we don't need to worry about that. And the down payment at the closing is uh, the difference 20% minus 19.5, you already paid 3%. Mm -hmm. So that will be around this much. That's like 17% down mm -hmm. payment at a closing, which means uh, November 25, that day, you need to have this much plus the closing cost need to be ready for this much plus the closing cost. Oh, so okay. we just need to, and then total amount of purchase is this much. And that the uh, verification down payment and closing cost, this will be performed by the loan company, loan broker, they will perform this and then there'll be a lot of procedure what they will, he will ask you to do. And then also there will be appraisal contingency, which is so we need to be done by 17 days, but we want to do it fast because they already move out of the house. So that we, our pr process can be fast. So we shoot him for 12 days, that means as soon as uh, they accept and uh, the loan company asks you for employee verification, they're going to give you the paper to verify, you're going to bring it to your your company for them to sign for you, your HR. Mm -hmm. and also, there will be other, other like a, maybe like a loan verif the uh, rent verification that currently you live in the house of somebody else and you pay rent to the landlord. So that there will be a paper for landlord to sign, verify you live there and your payment on time every time, every month, and that uh, you're good tenants and all that, you know, they, they're gonna just say, give you the paper for you to give your landlord to fill out a form and sign that paper. And once mm -hmm. those process is done, then they will do the uh, appraisal. Appraisal is uh, the appraisal company will contact you and you will pay around $600 either 600, 650 or something like that. And you pay and pay, once you pay, they will schedule and go to the house to replace the house. So far, my comp, the comparison we did for your house, is about 650. So 675, we think is a little bit too much. So 650, hopefully they take it. If they take it, the appraisal price should, should be close to that range. The loan company, once they come up with the report, you will receive that report and they will give another report, the same report to the loan company to make sure you're not paying too much, not paying too less, you're paying just about the right price. If uh, the price is different, if the price is a lot lower and loan company think that they can only give you 80% of the loan, which means your down payment might increase because the price lower, they only give you 80% 80 percent, 80 percent is lower, but our price is still stay with 650. That means that we still need to reach that 650. And if that happens, there are two, there are one way we can do, we can ask the seller to lower the price to match the appraised value so that you don't pay that much. But you also up down them if they wanted to go with the appraised value or they don't want. So that's the case we need to be very, uh, working very hard with them and see what we can do to help you to not to get up to that point. So six, oh, I, have, I think that we is pretty much closer range. I have a question. So the appraisal is gonna be done after I submit the offer? Like how? Yeah, that's correct. They, they, your, your offer need to be accept before we can do reasonable things. We can, you, they accept your offer, then we can send them the addendum, ask them to repair, fix everything. If you just, we just give to them right now, you know, 
along with this uh, purchase agreement, they take a look and they're gonna reject us because they're not gonna fix it. In. They, you understand? They, yeah, we but, do the acceptance, then we do then, that. But then what if we submit the offer and then I, later when we ask them, they they said they don't fix it? Like, uh, like so we have to? There's uh, another way we can, there's one way we can do is uh, demand for repair and we ask them to do it and uh, they must do it. Otherwise, we will take our money back and there's no purchase. There's so-called the contingency. That means uh, four things. There are four things, contingency. There are four things where I want to tell you. First thing is the seller's disclosure. Later, we're going to walk through the seller's disclosure. Uh -huh. Second thing is the inspection report. We're going to walk through the inspection report. Third thing is the loan contingency, which is uh, your verification for your financial information to make sure loan company will grant you the money, help you to pay for this so that you can start a loan payment once you're moving. Mm -hmm. That's the third thing, loan. First, number four is the appraisal. Appraisal, if the price is not going the way you want it, you, this is four thing, any of this doesn't happen to the way you want it. We can always cancel and get our money back. That 3% you already deposited, the 19.5. Mm -hmm. Any of these four, none of them up to our standard, we can get the money back. That's to protect you and also protect the house so that you don't, you don't, uh, you pay the money, you can still get the money back. And they, we ask, they need to do it. If they don't do it, we take the money back. There's no deal. And they need, they need to put the mark house back to the market sell to somebody else which is uh, the thing the seller doesn't want to do because then they postpone their selling day and the house put it back to the market people gonna think this house got a problem that's why it was under contract and nothing deal didn't work out and then they put back to the market so there's a there's a few things like this and it happens a lot of times sometimes because the buyer loan got denied so they cannot buy and then they have to cancel and they get their money back so the full contingency is very very important you understand this uh -huh. contingency, yeah. the, we already went through the long contingency that's now later you you gonna it's gonna be here also so you're gonna see it okay now we're talking about the appraisal contingency as soon as long got you know our offer got accepted we are under contract and the week they're gonna spend six hundred dollars you're gonna spend six hundred dollars for the appraiser to go to the house the appraiser the house value and if the price is similar close and that be, don't be a big deal and that'll be fine if price is too low and the and then you know then that will be a problem come up then we we, we want to ask them to match a lower price which is better for you because you buy cheaper. Mm -hmm. But the thing is the seller might not agree because then he doesn't get what he wanted, the price. Uh -huh. So, you know, he so, might think, okay, I don't want to sell and you, uh, to, to, you don't lower the price, I don't buy and then there's no deal. And we search but, for a different house. But in that case, can I get back the deposit money? Yes, if yes, yes, yes. Yes, the four appraisal, they're set days. You see right here? There mm -hmm. is a 17 day, the 12 days. That means the 12 days, the appraisals need to perform. And in 12 days, if we, we don't like it, we need to cancel. So we get our money back. Or we can ask for extension. 12 days, the appraisal didn't work, didn't do anything. We can ask for one week, one more week for appraisal to come to do the extension for him to perform the appraisal. And the seven days extension, if the price come up to be lower and the seller didn't want to sell you lower price and that seven days, then you decide we can cancel, cancel the contract, then you still get your money back. Oh, so is there any cases that I can't get my money back in the worst? We passed the, uh, the extension period. So there are four things we need to do, right? Long. If we don't get denied within certain days, long, you see right here, do you oh. see contingency yes. 17 days? If you within 17 days, you don't get denied. Let's say your financial status is not that good and then you got denied. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and they tell you within 17 days, you know you cannot buy, cancel right away. We cancel right away, you get your money back. Mm -hmm. So they are the days, the 12 days, the 17 days for this contingency, they have mm -hmm. each meaning. 12 days, if you done and then that's good, we re remove, we can remove the contingency. That means we move forward. Mm -hmm. We're done with this one. Mm -hmm. Now we have a long contingency left. In 17 days, uh, you got to prove everything is good and we can remove that. Either remove or if, if they need more information from you, Franco say, oh, I need more information from you, maybe the tax return and all that. So mm -hmm. within 17, you need to provide him the tax return and for them to underwrite to verify your financial situation is good. And they, if they mm -hmm. approve, that means they give you the money. Then mm -hmm. you can say, I remove this contingency. You understand? Once mm -hmm. you remove the contingency, we're moving forward, more steps to coming. There are four things, right? First thing is appraisal. Second thing is loan. Third thing is disclosure. Later, we're going to go through. And the fourth thing is the, the inspection report. All these four things need to agree by you and by the seller, both. And usually it's by you. This fourth thing is usually by you. You mm -hmm. agree everything and you approve everything. They approve you. Everything is nice. We remove everything, that means we're going to close. You're going to get a key and move into the house. Mm -hmm. Everything okay. is good, everything you think is up to your standard is not bad and it's good. We remove the old contingency mm -hmm. so that move forward to closing. Okay. And you okay. pay the money, the final price, and then you move into the house. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, just want to make sure if we follow the, the process and then if everything's went well, if, I mean, we only can't get the deposit back unless we pass the, the limit day, like the 12 or 17 That's days. correct, that's correct, yes. If you pass limit day and we didn't do anything, they take the money. We cannot even, we, that, if that happens, the only way is we need to close. Mm -hmm. We just need a house. Mm -hmm. You cannot so get your money back. So why not just get a house, you know, you understand? <laughs> yes, yeah. you got denied from the loan. Loan and the appraisal, these two is the hardest thing. I see. So the 12 and 17 days, is it like the regular day or the business day? So it's like... Re regular days. Regular days, oh, okay. Saturday, Sunday counts. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it's okay. in a hurry. The thing we push to a little bit faster, faster because they already left the house. Mm -hmm. If they still sleep in the house, then there can be some problem there because... You know, you need to work on that and the appraisal come to the house, they live in the house and then, you know, they, yeah, it's create some problem right there. But the good thing is they, they left the house. Then uh, you can easily work on the house. So, so do you know how many or like how long it takes for the appraisal to, let's say after the acceptance? Yeah, really? appraisal is, uh, that, that's also another thing. Appraisal, they are quite busy. Because people mm -hmm. buy the house, you know, not just us. There'll mm -hmm. be 500 or other families. Because right now, 500 closing every month. Mm -hmm. So there'll be 500 or other family in one month buy the house. And appraiser is only so many people to appraise. So their schedule is very tight. And uh, if you, we, they, they give us a schedule for this day. And somehow we say, ah, oh, this schedule, we have something else to do. We cannot meet this schedule. When we change the other schedule, it will be very hard for them because they are, mm -hmm. they, are, they are extremely tight. They are extremely tight and busy. And they give us this schedule, we're going to have to go with this schedule. We're going to have to, it's very hard to say you want to switch. And also switch the day is very hard too because they, you pay the money, they will refund you the money. And then you need to pay one more time. So mm -hmm. that, that, that transaction would take a long time. Because mm -hmm. I, I had that experience, it was not, not that good. But once they, okay, so once the appointment is confirmed and then they go to the location to do the appraisal, do you know how long it takes to get the result? Result would be, if they said, I, I really, I don't like them to do during the weekend, starting from Thursday, because they're not gonna get you back Saturday and Sunday, you know, they get you back on Monday or Tuesday. So they, I don't, I don't like them to do it. Because the appraiser do whatever he do on the report, he's not, he's not final. He need to get, go through his company for the approval. Mm -hmm. 
his company approved, then they were sent to the loan officer and sent to you separately for the same mm -hmm. report. <coughs> yeah. So I, I would really like them to set up the time on Monday, Tuesday, mm -hmm. so that you can get it by Friday. Okay. I don't like them to set up the time on Thursday or Friday, then you're not going to get it until Monday or Tuesday. I Maybe see. Even and, with then, and then in terms of like the number of days that we put on the appraisal, is it like 17 days is the max? Can we put further? I mean, just in case, because I mean, right now it's kind of like the, almost like the holiday season, they might be busy as well. So instead of like 12 days, should we increase the number of days just to make sure everything is getting done like in time okay so uh let's get the i mean for 14th. me uh, i don't really um because for me i don't really need it to be like mm -hmm. before thanksgiving after thanksgiving is fine because like right now i have like no contract with the current place because i live at my uncle place so uh -huh. i can leave anytime so there's like no uh, uh kind no of hurry like, okay yeah no hurry so might be better if we can increase the number of days so that we make sure we have time because when it came to like Thanksgiving, a lot of people take off as well. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. okay, so we, we move to uh, 15 days, fine? Or, or you want to exactly 17 days? So, is 17 days the max day? That yeah, uh, or you can, you can ask for more, but there's really no need to ask for even more than 17 days because it, it will be too cold. The case will be too cold. We, mm -hmm. we have a past, we have a, this, this, is, uh, this is already stipulated in the contract. You can ask for more, yeah, that's, that's for sure. Because uh, they, they give you the day. But to the buyer and seller's standpoint, there, there's really no need to stand up because they already left the house. Mm -hmm. They already, yeah. they, they don't live there anymore. So I think, uh, I think uh, do, you, do you think it's good to have 15 days? Or you want yeah. more, or Maybe. 17 days. Um, Usually, because uh, this, this will take a uh, take some time, but I think a 15 days should be should be fine. What do you think? I mean, it, it's a little bit more than two weeks. Um. Yeah. yeah. Let's let put like um. Yeah. Maybe let put 17 days. Okay. Yeah. You want a 17 days? Yeah. Okay, we'll go, we'll go with the 17 days. Okay, but as soon as they will ask us to do it, then I think we can do it, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, they will, uh, as soon as the loan company say, okay, they, they will ask us to do it, then, then just we just go ahead, go with their schedule. Because it's not, because they, they give the schedule, you pay the money, we need to according to appraiser's schedule. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. we yeah, so we, we go with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we would we make the appraisal with the long contingency the same uh 17 days. That would be so the thing is uh as soon as we get acceptance and uh long company will ask you for all the documents, mm -hmm. that's when you need to prepare and send it to them so they can get approval. Now remember the 17 days is not you provide them the document for them to get approval. It's not you send them the information, not it is for them to approve you, which means we need to give them the information as soon as possible so they can approve within the 17 days. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. That, can that's we, a difference. Can we, that's a difference. Yes. Yeah. Can we move that also to the 21 days? Because I mean, I just want to make sure. Um, because I think all the paper, I probably have it, but just in terms of like the verification. Okay. My company, people start taking holiday off. So it might, I mean, just in case it takes some time so that just they, to make sure having a I, 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 had the, I had this concern as well, because I am worried about, you know, holiday people taking vacation and yeah. not working and all that. But uh, they, as far as I know, if there's a deadline, they, they cannot, they cannot say, you know, we are vacation, we can, uh, now they, they, they need to follow our contract. They do follow our deadline. So this is one thing I think we can be ease. There, there will be people working for you. So you don't have to worry. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. 21 days, that's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Let's just put it like three weeks. It's uh, I don't have yeah. to be worried about the time. Okay. Okay. So remember the 21 day is uh, they, they give you back for the approval. So that means 
as soon as they, we get acceptance, whatever they ask, we need to provide them right away, right away. Mm -hmm. so they can give us back very fast. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, there's uh, no loan contingency because uh, if we have cash, but we borrow the money, so we do need the loan contingency, 21 days. Mm -hmm. uh, there'll be something called the credit right here. Lender limits on buyer's credit. This is when the lender, the loan company, they give you, they give you the credit. They'll be giving you the, uh, the closing cost, the agreed by the parties. That means you and the seller. To be disclosed, if there's a credit they give you, they need to tell the seller that they give you the credit. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I don't think this applies to you because you, there's no credit to give to us. So we don't need oh, to worry about to that. To give to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we stay with the financing. We borrow the money. That's what we did. And let's go to this important part. That is uh, the, this one right here, buyers mm -hmm. inspection advisory. So even though they spend the money and get the inspection, Remember they get an inspection, we, we read an inspection for the home and health, which is a home, in, home inspection. Even though they do that, they still advise the buyer to do their own diligence. That means you spend your money for the inspection, for the home, for the roof, for the termite inspection. They still, they still want you to do that. They, they ask you to do your own homework. Mm -hmm. Even though they already, seller already spend their own money for the report, but that as uh, our, our point of view, we still ask you to do your own inspection. Mm -hmm. That means I, you, you will spend like 900 to $1,200 for your own inspection, see the report. I see, then, I have a question. Yeah. So um, I think I read like the inspection, the home and the roof is is okay. Like there's like multiple things to fix, but I mean like kind of like we can fix it ourselves. But the termite, that, that was the one that I'm kind of concerned. Like, do you know how, how much it costs to do a, a termite inspection again? Because I just afraid it's going to be like, um, the termite is going to be like a fact or damage the structure because like the termite inspection that I got, it was really general that not really detailed in terms of like how much damage that the termite got in the house. Yeah, that one, they already have report and then they already say how much they can fix it. If you wanted to do it on your own, you can obviously spend, we, we need to research to find out how much is uh, one inspection for the termite inspection, how much is for you so that you'll be able to find, which we, we don't have to worry right now because we, we right now worry about the acceptance. If they accept our price, then we give the money for the initial deposit. Then we worry about the uh, appraisal. I mean, uh, worry about the termite because the termite really is, uh, there are a few ways we can do. First, follow up with the $5,000 we ask them to fix they can either fix it or they can give us a credit that we can use the end of, I mean, the credit means at the end of a closing, they will just deduct the money from your closing cost, the mm -hmm. money you pay so that you don't pay as much and they give it back to you so that you can use the money you didn't pay to use this same inspector they, they, they are termite company. They also fix things. We can use the money, hire them back to do this, perform all these damages that is damaged by the termite for them to fix a problem. That's one thing. Uh, in terms of, uh, you wanna know if there's other things, then we need to spend money on ourselves to hire the termite inspector to do the inspection. In result of that, they're gonna tell you this, how much you need to fix. Same thing that report shows. They will still tell you how much it costs to fix entire inspection result. 
So it's, it's really up to you, see if uh, you want to spend extra money to have a ter your own termite company to do it for you, or you can go with the, the one they already have and we ask for the credit. Mm -hmm. Or if they don't want to give us credit, we ask them to repair, they spend their own money to fix before they can get back to us. And also the $5,000, they probably will not agree with everything. They will probably say, okay, when I buy the house, they already this, they already that, you know. Then we can ask them the important part of the house. Because uh, I can see that there was a fungus damage in the garage door, we see that. And that I think, that I think is minor and uh, we, we don't have to ask them to pay for that. But some of the other things may be more major, more important that we can ask because uh, they do have uh, itemized to add up to 5,100. Yeah, yeah, so I see. We can ask for the itemized part. We think it's more important for them to agree with so that they, if too little, they can maybe spend their own money to fix it or they can just give us a credit. So I think that would be a better way to do so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think for like the thing that add up to the 5,000, there are a couple minor things. It's okay, but I mean, the termite, it was kind of like, because I have like the the map, like where like it's got affected by the termite. It looked like the, um, some of like the structure got affected by, what got damaged by the termite, but it was kind of like, they was estimate for like 3,000 something to fix it. But I was just afraid that if the report is not detailed enough that it, it kind of like didn't report on the, the damage within the structure because you know, like termite is really annoying. Cause I mean, at some point I was worried that the termite gonna be affect like inside the structure. And then in case if we have to like do the termite kind of like, a, like treatment, it's mm -hmm. gonna be up in the, the neighbor as well. So it's gonna yeah. be yes. like annoying in the case that if the neighbor doesn't like uh, want it to do together, or I mean, if, the, if that's the case, like like how do we fix that? If let's say um, the termite situation is getting worse, that is damaged the house structure, we want to do like termite treatment, but the neighbor, like the one on the right side, they kind of like not like um, complying with us, or like they kind of like, like they ask us to like uh, pay for the whole thing, pay for like their hotel and stuff. It's gonna be kind of like annoying because I haven't known the neighbor yet, but I mean, in the worst case, if the termite um, situation is um, serious, then I was kind of like worry about how do I- uh, uh, actually... uh, This we need to find out from the HOA because uh, I don't know if HOA would help, uh, not help, but would, Maybe someone else has done that in the HOA knows. And uh, we, we need to find out from HOA. And also the neighbor, you know, if they both fine and then we get the HOA approved, then you can be able to you know, share the cost. I think that uh, it might help. But if they don't want to do it, I don't know if they, uh, the individual house to do, we call this a fumigation. You know, the, they cover the entire house and then they give it the gas inside the house so that they kill everything inside. Mm -hmm. The treatment is like a lot, maybe $2,800 uh, for three days. And that treatment would last for three years. So that three years guaranteed termite will not come back. And, uh, but then there's gas in the house. And then after work, you probably need to do cleaning the house you know, probably before that, you really need to do a little cover up for everything. So the gas will not, they probably give you, help you to cover everything. Because you pay that cost, they, they should help you to do all that. I, I see quite frankly, friend, very frequently, I see a lot of uh, household do that. During the days and now I, I see a lot of, uh, if you just drive around, you can see the cover with uh, red plastic bag. Mm -hmm, and, uh, yeah, yeah. The entire house, and then they do the fumigation. They put the gas inside to kill the termite. The thing with you is that uh, you are one wall away with your neighbor, so that you say it's the best to do it together with your neighbor because uh, you do on this part. Obviously, it doesn't is not that effective because you still have a wall. That one mm -hmm. wall away is your neighbor. Yeah. So yeah. So you're right. So that we also need to consult with the HOA to see what their opinion is.
So the I know uh, they have a seasonal meeting, I believe, for the HOA. So I will encourage you to right now. I I just read the the meeting meeting minutes. Mm -hmm. That means uh, the meeting notes. They meet like uh, last time was May probably very close to the end of the year, they probably do another one. If you happen to buy a house already become the owner, I highly encourage you to join the HOA meeting. Be a, you are the homeowner, you should know anything about the, that this complex, what happened uh, so that you can have a basic understanding. So I, I really encourage you once you buy a house to join the HOA. You will be, they will send you the email also, welcome you and and you ask for the email, how to get a link. Right now they all do the Zoom meeting or those conferencing uh, app. You can just <laughs> sit at home and join them to, all together. So I, I encourage you to do that. As far as the term, I, I, think, I think we encourage you to do on your own, but a lot of people really don't do. You know, they don't even want to spend money to do this. But the good thing is that your seller already do the inspection. We can go from the inspection. We can go from the inspection first. The their their inspection. So because they already know where is the damage and how much is the cost to repair. So I think we can go from that and ask them to to fix that once our contract is accepted. Either they can fix it or they give us a credit to do that. I think that would be the best way. Mm -hmm. But do you think they're gonna, so, I mean, after the acceptance, do they actually do that? Or what, I mean, what if they said they don't want to do that so that we have to do it ourselves? We have to deal with that ourselves? There's a two way you can, one is uh, we cancel the contract and we look for another one or we can just, uh, we ask them to perform. There's a call the action to perform, perform and notice. They don't do it, then we cancel. Mm -hmm. to scare them away, scare them to do it. Then they, they will either think about to give us a credit or they will do it. Awesome. They will spend their money to do it. Okay, so after I, so up, let's say for example, after the acceptance, I submit my deposit. I still can cancel anytime before the, the contingency day, yeah, that's correct. Uh, so, yeah. in any uh, reason, I can still cancel it. Like you can still cancel it before the uh, the uh, uh, the contingency day. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. So before the for contingency those reason for those four four biggest reasons: long appraisal, inspection, disclosure. Oh, so only for those four reasons. Yes, like yes, because those are four major reasons for us to cancel. This is a so-called the material facts. Mm -hmm. Material so, facts. Those are material facts. So I see. So yeah. like after the acceptance within the contingent time period, uh -huh. if if let's say if we require them to uh have to fix on like the termite uh thing, and if they said no, we we have the right to cancel. Yes, correct. Okay. They, that's fall on them, not on us. That's their fault. They don't do it, then that's their fault. Okay, but do we specify that in the uh, offer or just um, ask? Uh, yeah, it's all in the contract. That's why we need to go through all this uh, agreement. Okay, okay, yeah. Yes. yes. Thank you. Yeah, so we yeah, just... I, I want you to, uh, that's why we, I, I really encourage you to do today's meeting because uh, you need to mm -hmm. understand also. So yeah. that's good you ask. Because then, yeah. uh, then you will be all on the same page mm -hmm. and we're not gonna, you know, because yeah, yeah, I think it is, we just need to do do this. So we have understanding of uh, how the process is and we can do the right action at the right time. Right, yeah. I mean, yeah, cause it's like my first time. So I just want to make sure I understand the process. So it's gonna be faster for me to process as well. <laughs> yes, yeah. it is. Thank you so much. Thank you, yeah. Thank you a lot for your help too. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah I really wanted to, uh, you know, be, um, I, sh I should, you know, help you to do everything. I mean, all this process, I, you should be clear understanding, the no confusion. You know, I don't want you to have that kind of feeling. That's not good. So I want you to understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Then the next term is going to be the cost. As you can see, 
allocation the cost, uh, the allocation cost, the inspection reports and certificates. The first one is buyer, a uh, seller. Sellers should pay for natural hazard zone disclosure report, which is a natural hazard report, natural hazard report. And this for the environment for the, probably a few things, the earthquake, flood, and also the fire, mm -hmm. and all this zone, this house is within. So they will be, the report, we already see that. That's in the disclosure they already put in. Later we go through that also. Mm -hmm. So we have a basic answer. So the seller will pay for this. And the second thing, seller will pay for smoke alarm and the carbon nanoside detector installation. So they already installed, we already see. Mm -hmm. And also the escrow, we ask the seller to pay for the escrow fee. That's right here in Santa Clara County. We, that's uh, the practice, almost become the standard practice for Santa Clara County that the seller pay for the escrow fee. And also the sellers should pay for owner's title insurance policy. So sellers should pay for that as well. So, you know, so far you don't pay anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, other cost, there will be seller pay for county transfer tax. So seller pay for that. And now starting this, you need to pay, that's uh, you and the seller, but then it's half and half. City mm -hmm. transfer tax, you pay half, they pay half. Oh, do you have an estimate on that? Like how, how much do you- uh, I, That's, uh, I don't know exactly how much, but I, I don't, I think it's less than 500, very cheap, not expensive, yeah. not expensive. So you, you only think about half of that. So I think it's very good. Okay. And this one, uh, sellers should pay for homeowner association fee. This one is a $250. So seller will pay for $250 for that. And also sellers should pay for HOA fee preparing all the documents. They already pay because it's the disclosure. So we already know that. Yeah. And then we also ask seller to pay for the home warranty Home warranty, which is right here. Mm -hmm. It's 575. That means when they get the money, they sell you the house, they get the money, they will deduct $575 from their car, from their money to help you to buy one year of a warranty. That covers the air conditioning, that covers the water heater, that covers the plum plumbing, piping. Sometimes maybe some instance, maybe the electricity wiring, something like that. But it, it's good. We ask them to pay and usually they pay. They want to protect themselves. So they want you to pay. You now they want to help you for the first year you live there. So anything goes wrong, like a water heater, like a air conditioning, anything goes wrong, you can call them, call the uh, this uh, warranty company Usually is a first title, first national. This company, for them to send a vendor, send a repairman to you, you only pay $75, but repair everything, which is a lot of cheaper. If you don't have this uh, home warranty plan, you just call them to come. They come the first hour, they already charge you $75 to $100, $75 first hour. Mm -hmm. And then whatever repair, plus the time, plus the labor, plus the, the material they replace, that's extra. So it's very yeah. expensive. So this plan basically, if anything goes wrong, you call them, they come one time, you pay $75. They fix everything, only $75. So it's very good price. Mm -hmm. we, we ask them to pay for you and usually they pay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So this also the item that they already move out of the house. So we already know the stove, they're gonna leave for you. Refrigerator, mm -hmm. they're gonna leave for you. Wash dryer, they already left for you. Mm -hmm. But not a furniture. Those furnitures, they, they're there for the purpose of a stage. Mm -hmm. They will remove all that. The painting, you know, the frame, right. everything, they will take it out when mm -hmm. they we move in. Angel, when they under contract, when you under contract, they will always send somebody to take all that out. 
So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's cost money. Every day is, those furniture stay there for one day, they'll be charged, you know. So Oh yeah, I heard that too. I heard like they, they kind of like rent it to Yeah, they rent it, yeah. They rent those things, yes. Yeah. So uh lease. Now we don't have any lease, so we don't have to worry about this. They don't have any lease, they don't have to worry about this. Items excluded from sale. Now they don't have anything, so we don't have to. Now closing possession, we're thinking about 25. November 25 is the closing day. And uh, the closing day as well as the get a key day. Usually we say this day, but sometimes we really waiting for the money to be funded. Waiting for money to be funded, that means you need to first sign a paper, loan documents, mm -hmm. and you need to pay the closing cost plus the down payment of the risk of 17%. Mm -hmm. This thing has to pay and sign, and then need to be notary, notify, and then they receive this loan docs, send it back to the loan company. Loan company verify everything is good before they will fund the money to the seller, seller get the money. That's when actual closing is. Mm -hmm. So the day we sign on Thursday, that's assuming sometimes we sign on Thursday mm -hmm. and then paper is all good and send it to a loan docs, send it to the loan company and loan company verify. And guess what? Money is not funded because there's a weekend or next day holiday, money not funded. You you're not getting the key. Mm -hmm. Even though everything you already do, you already did, and uh, because of seller didn't get their money, it doesn't consider closing. They will wait till the money actually found the seller receive the money before you can get the key. And those that day may not be the same day with the closing day. The day you sign the paper, you pay the money, may not be the same day. Mm -hmm. I just want you to have this uh, basic understanding because a lot of people think they sign the paper, pay the money, they should move in right away. But it's a lot of time, it doesn't happen that way. Mm -hmm. the, the, the way it happens is that the money gets to seller's hand. That's the, when the day that's actually closed. Mm -hmm. And that's the uh, escrow officer will insist, loan company will insist, no matter how much uh, our agent, me, keep pushing, and you keep asking a lot of buyers that keep asking, you know, they need to move because they, they finished their lease contract with their house and they really need to move out. But if a seller doesn't get paid, we don't move in, we can't get a key. Mm -hmm. So there's, and also another thing, you, once you get a key, highly recommend the buyer to get another key set change the key. But during all these days, you, many, many people come into the house. Right. Someone may get a key, du duplicate a key, and then yeah. after you move in, they can go into the house, steal things, you know, uh, when you're not at home. Yeah. So we recommend once you get a key, change the key. Yeah. So that you only you have it, nobody else has it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Very important. Yeah. Yeah, so, thanks for the tip, yeah. Yes, yes. So right now, well, we shoot for this day, mm -hmm. okay? We shoot mm -hmm. for this day. And we wanted to be able to, this day is closing. Sometimes if everything is done, you can do it early. You can do like two days in advance, three days in, mm -hmm. as long as a loan company say, okay, escrow company say fine, we can do two days because you, you sign the paper, you give the money because they still need to verify that cost maybe one day or two days and, mm -hmm. and before the money can be funded. So if you really wanted to be able to get a key this day, this day is not a day you sign a key, sign everything. Should be two or three days in advance you already sign, give the money. So that this day you actually get a key, sell to get the money, you're moving on this day. So you, you understand what I'm saying, right? Mm -hmm. Planning yeah. ahead. That's what I was trying to say, planning it here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Seller in remaining possession, that sometimes sellers stay living in the home and they need to move out. After close, 
So they would say, okay, I'll rent the house. After I sell my house, I rent the house for one or two months so that I can move out. So this is what it is. This happened many, many times. But your case is good because they already left. So you don't need to worry about that. Okay, yeah. The uh, tenant occupied property, so that this, so they need to make sure that if they still live there and they should rent it back from you. Because right now you become the owner and they become the tenant. It's very interesting. Just you be very interesting. <laughs> you know, when you're yeah. a buyer, like you beg them and right now they do beg you. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's weird. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to this. Statuary other disclosure included left pen base. This is a house that was built before 1978 and your house is after 1978. So you, you don't have this problem. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. And uh, natural environment hazard disclosure. This one is uh, the one we already have in our booklet, in our salary disclosure, so we can take a look at that. Oh, withholding, withholding tax, this means on the closing day, they counted on this day. From this day before the sellers still live in the house, they pay the tax through the day that closing. After the closing day, this day forward to the end of the year, is you pay for the tax. Is it for the property, property yeah, tax? Yeah, property tax, yeah, property tax, yeah. Mm -hmm. There will be sometimes so-called the supplemental tax. When they count the tax rate was that rate, the, oh, the day was different. When they count, was they counting with based on the day and the tax rate? And if that may, maybe the tax rate increased or changed, and also the day may be different, and till the end of the year, coming year, they need to, they need to get it back for the difference. That's called supplement tax, and you are you are getting. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you, a lot of customers will get it. They don't understand why it's supplement because when they calculate the tax, the tax rate was different and also the day was different. That's why the supplement tax later on, after you move into the house next year, there's new tax come out, they give you this so-called supplement. That's when the tax was different. So they were asked, the county will ask you to pay the supplement tax. So I, I want you to understand that. You understand? Yeah. Okay. I I mean, relating to this, um, I just um, question because it's okay. relevant. So in the, you remember you shared with me like the estimate closing cost for like a 60K house. And then in that, they have kind of like a, a couple of months of like tax. Let me, let me find that because, I mean, do you still have like the estimation? Oh, yeah. So in the closing cost breakdown, mm -hmm. it has the prepaid cost, which is the 14 months of insurance four months of taxes, like what is that like uh, for? Uh, let me see, let me see. Yeah. Okay, so 14 months of insurance? Yeah, in the closing. Oh yeah, 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 14 months of insurance prepaid costs. Uh, because now is toward the end of the year. Uh-huh. So you think about that, then you understand. This is 14 months. They want to buy one year of uh, one year of uh, insurance, but you, you don't have to you don't have to go exactly with this because when you buy insurance, you buy one year. Uh -huh. Whatever day you count, count one year, 12 months, and that's what it is. They count this for you because this is the estimate. Oh so they count it. So you don't have to go exactly with this. Oh, I see. So the estimate here, because it was into October. So the 14 month is going to be November, December this year and the entire next year. Yes, 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 you're right. But also the loan company will ask you to buy homeowner insurance before closing. Mm -hmm. So you need to 
prepare to find, usually people go with their car insurance company. Oh yeah. To get a quote for a home insurance and they buy. Mm -hmm. And then they, the loan company will ask you for the declaration page of the home insurance. And if, when you want to buy the loan home insurance, you want to buy the purchase price. The limit you want to buy, let's say it's 650, mm -hmm. you want to buy exactly 600 or a little bit higher so mm -hmm. that you can cover. Now, remember this, loan company give you the money to buy the house. Mm -hmm. So they need some sort of reassurance. Oh, mm -hmm. That's why they want, they want you to buy the insurance. And then they want to keep that as evidence in case something happened that you can claim and make sure the house go back to original mm -hmm. so that they still keep the house. They still need that, that piece of paper from you that to show them mm -hmm. because they give you the money. You owe them the money. Mm -hmm. That's why so they need it. I have to submit like that um, home insurance. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Home, so you, uh, once we get acceptance, this is also another thing you want to do to get a quote, find the best quote, but the limit has to be the purchase price, 650, based mm -hmm. on that to give you the quote of the house so that you can be covered. Mm -hmm. Or later I'll ask Franco to see what is the price you should buy. It's very important. Because you buy low, long yeah. company will not accept. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, I see. So in like the, like the, like the 11, I like said so in the estimate that you, you share with me the 11 around 11 points i mean eleven thousand closing costs that include the home insurance as well uh no because you pay 20 percent which is not in the escrow anymore you need to pay on your own uh insurance you need to pay on your own and you need to send that declaration page to the loan company and tax they don't collect for you anymore because you pay 20%. So they don't need to collect from you. You need to prepare on your own and every six months, you need to pay tax by yourself. They, I, they would do this for the closing. The closing of escrow, they would charge you all the way probably to the end of this year so that you don't need to worry about this year tax. They will help you to pay. The escrow company will charge you and help you to pay. So this year, you don't need to worry. Or maybe, uh, this, or maybe four or six months. Uh -huh. Don't need to worry. I we'll see. ask them. We'll ask them to find out. This we need to ask them to find out. They can charge you for a certain time period, so you don't need to worry because you you're closing. You just buy the house, mm -hmm. but afterward you are doing on your own. Not mm -hmm. like a, people pay less than twenty percent, then there will be escrow account to to collect those money insurance and uh, tax make sure you pay them so that they get their own they get the money help you to collect and help you to pay but people pay more than 20 percent they are on their own they need to prepare their own and make sure they they do their own uh, tax to their insurance you mm -hmm. just need to show them every year you do buy the insurance mm -hmm. i see so the the closing cost is the money that I pay to the escrow company, basically where they help me to uh, process like the paperwork and then also the, the what is that called, like the title and stuff? That's the correct, that's correct. Because they need to hire lawyer to uh, make sure this house is a properly transfer. They mm -hmm. need to make sure this house doesn't owe anything to anybody. Mm -hmm. the, the seller, obviously, maybe he has a loan that I need to pay off. So they will find out all that information and that's cost right there. And then, and then they will collect the money from the seller, from, from you, from the loan company, from you to them. And then they help the seller to pay everything seller owes to clear the title. So you understand the seller maybe owe to tax, tax probably tax to the county they he didn't pay uh, he has a loan that he didn't pay finish and he has a repair cost he didn't pay mm -hmm. he has uh, maybe other things that he didn't pay 
So the escrow company will research to find out the house owe anything to anyone. Mm -hmm. And all that cost will, will come up with the price. And okay. when you buy a house, that money, they would collect your money and then and then pay to whatever the seller, whatever the house owe, pay, 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 everything, everything, pay, 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 pay. The leftover is what is what for the seller. You understand? So when you take over the house, it's clean. This house doesn't know, owe anything to anyone. Yeah, so it's basically their responsibility to help me to verify those. And then they're collecting the fee from the closing costs. Yes, they, yeah. yes, they, they do everything. That's why you need an escrow company. Very important. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, yes, yes. The, the next one is uh, Megan's Law. That's a uh, sexual offense offenders. Uh, the people, they, they want you to know that the place you live in, there's no, or they, they do have some people. But how do you find those people? This website right here. So this website, you go in there, you search close to your house. If there are some sexual offenders, and then you need to be careful for those people. They will show you where are these people live. Are they close okay. to your house? Mm -hmm. You know, or are they in a complex or somewhere? I don't know. Then they will show. So you have a preparation. You 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 have a better idea of what you should do. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's nice to share that kind of information. Yeah. Okay. So notice regarding the gas and hazard liquid transmission pipeline. They were in the this, the this natural hazard, they would tell you the this information as well. And also this website you can find. Mm -hmm. So you can search on that. The thing is, condominium plant seller has seven days to give you the disclosure, which we not even started the contract. <coughs> we already have disclosure. So this one, we have no problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, they will tell you the condominium is located somewhere, subdivision and know that that's always in the disclosure. And the condition of property, they sell as is. That means uh, is this condition you know, with that, and that's how much you buy. We can still ask them to repair, still based on the material facts, because they disclose everything they know. Mm -hmm. So we need to read that. Buyers in this investigation. So you, we as a buyer, we need to do our own investigation, the property based on everything they gave us. And we can go there many, many times, walk around the house, walk around the neighborhood to find out if that's uh, the desirable area that we want to live in. Mm -hmm. So that's basically for that. Fire indemnity, seller protection for entire upon the property. Now buyers should keep the property free and clean and repair all damage arising the buyer's investigation. Repair all damage arising from, so sellers should do that. And identify and hold seller harmless from all resulting liability claims and demands. Buyers should carry, buyers should require anyone acting on buyer's behalf to carry policy liability workers compensation. When we do that, we need to make sure that we do it in a thorough and very safe way so that we don't get, uh, get into hurting, nobody get hurt, it's very important and title investing. So we know that the escrow company will do all this title report for us. Mm -hmm. And it's all right there. So we, we can check on that. And there will be the transaction coordinator. My transaction coordinator will help us to process all these paperwork as well. 
So we need to make sure we sign. We need we need to read. We will, we will go over right later on. Close of escrow shall receive a grant deed conveying title. After you pay, you should receive a grant deed. They will send it to you. The title, very important. Uh, you be now. You want your brother to be on the title as well. Is that right? Um, no, probably right now it's just for probably me because I don't want, because I mean, right now he has like financial ad, so I don't want him to be get affected by this. Okay. Well, so maybe, yeah. Okay, so I think that's a good way, yes. Or I have a question in the um title. Is there any kind of like way to add him as like the beneficiary or like some sort of thing like that? We can ask the escrow company that part of question. I think that you probably can. Mm -hmm. You probably can because uh, your your brother can be the uh, beneficiary. I think you probably can, yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, when we come to that point, I will we will ask them. Yeah. To find out because I think it's very important. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's a homeowner's uh, title insurance which the seller will pay. We ask seller to pay. Uh, the escrow will hold. Uh, she'll notify the buyer. A title company can provide information about availability, coverage, cost of each policy, and uh, in installments. If the homeowner policy is not available, buyer should choose another policy. Instruct the loan escrow officer to in writing or uh, should pay the increase in cost. Which is, I don't think we're gonna have a lot of problem with this because it's gonna be your title. Hopefully it's gonna be clean and clear. And so you don't need to worry. Uh, the time period to remove, remember we talked about the four, we talking about the uh, 17 days of a uh, long appraisal mm -hmm. and also long 17 days. There is uh, 21 days for the long 17 days for the appraisal. There's mm -hmm. seven days sellers to give you the disclosure and reports. So we already have it, so we don't need to worry about seven days. But we have a 17 days to investigate and ask them to repair, to do this and do that. That 17 days, that's a day, that's our, as soon as we get acceptance, that day ticking, that we start that day. So that's when the day we need to be more concerned and careful about. Mm -hmm. So we have a 17 days. Up on the acceptance, after the acceptance. So as soon as we submit and they sign a paper, we start in that day. That's when we started the 17 days, and that also started 21 days of uh, the long contingency. So we need to get this process as soon as possible. Which means long company will ask us for the the, the for you know verification for your loan. For your uh, your uh, tenant, not tenant, your uh, for your landlord, and then there's a lot of paperwork. So give money. All this need to complete it very fast, mm -hmm. so they can approve us within 21 days. Mm -hmm. Removal contingency with the offer. Buyer removes contingency specified in the attached contingency removal form. So. When we need to do a removal of each single one of these, we got four, then uh, we need to have you to sign that paper again. Inspection, we need a paper to sign again. Oh, I'll go through that. That's a lot of things. Really, that's a lot of things. Seller's right to cancel. Seller can cancel it also. Seller's right to cancel buyer contingency. If by the time specified in the agreement, Buyer does not deliver to seller the removal of uh, appraisal. That means, remember we talked about 17, 21 days, that days, those days. Uh -huh. If we don't, if within 21 days, we don't remove that. That means we don't finish our work. <coughs> then they can cancel it. Mm -hmm. They can cancel it. So it's all right to cancel the buyer contract obligations. Seller, after first delivering buyer, does notice buyer performance to perform. That means 
that those contingency we need to remove some of the thing we need to do if we don't do they will send us you need to do it notice buyer to perform to cancel this contract if by the time specified in the agreement but it does not take the following action deposit funds which we need to do by three days for three percent or the fund deposit the uh, pursuant to 3b we need to do it by three days that's basically what we you need to we need to understand okay yeah and deliver later deliver this 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 all just the beginning of that return the disclosure we need to sign everything all in the disclosure every single page you will sign it date it and we will send it to you transaction coordinator will send to you for all this and sign or initial separate the liquidated damage from an increased deposit as required by the paragraph that means we need to sign and then date it which the docu sign once you click you'll be signed and there will be date and time mm -hmm. so you don't need to worry about that because a lot of people they use their handwriting uh, sometimes they ignore the day or sometimes they forgot to sign here for didn't know they need to sign that and that caused a lot of problems because uh, it has to be all signed it has to be all clarified it's very important mm -hmm. so i want you to understand use DocuSign is a good thing is uh once you click your signature will be there and also uh -huh. day and times recorded uh-huh Notice the seller to perform, you see? Notice buyer or seller to perform. That's when they don't do it, we need to send them this form. Also, you will need to sign. There's a lot of form we need to do. So a lot of things we need to do, really. I'm, and I, I really uh, ask you to, the, this time is essence in this contract mm -hmm. time. So we need to make sure we do that. And so we yeah. have, can process fast. The removal contingency, you see effective removal, if a buyer removes in writing contingency cancellation rights, unless otherwise specified in writing, buyer should consecutively to be deemed to have completed all buyer investigation and review the reports and the applicable information and disclosures of pertaining to that contingency and cancel right or cancel rights. Within the time frame of a contingency time, you can either move forward to remove or you can cancel. Elected the uh, proceed with the, the contingent uh, transaction, assume all liability, responsibility, and expense for repairs or collections pertaining to that contingency or cancellation right or the inability to obtain financing. Remember that uh, when loan company uh, deny, uh, deny our application, that's when we can <coughs> ask for the, that's when we can ask for a cancellation of the contract. Mm -hmm. Close of escrow, this is very important. Before buyers or seller may cancel agreement for failure of other party to close escrow pursuant to this agreement, buyer or seller should first deliver to the other party to demand a close escrow. So that means we, we, we cancel. If we cancel because we cannot do it, that's why we cancel. But, but if everything is good, then we need to go ahead, perform close of escrow, which means sign a loan documents and also pay the closing costs. That's why we can, that's how it's called close of escrow. Effective of cancellation on deposits, if uh, we cancel, then what happened to the deposit? If buyer and seller gives a written notice to cancel, relation pursuing the rights, full duly exercise under terms and agreement, the parties agree to sign mutual instruction to cancel sell escrow release deposits. Now this one, remember, if we want to cancel, not just we say we want to cancel, then it's canceled. Not only we need to sign a paper, the seller need to sign a paper. So in case you want to cancel, both us 
you and me and seller and seller agent, we need to all sign that paper for cancellation before your money can get it back. If they don't sign, the money cannot be released. Oh, I see. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's a both that's a mutual agreement. Because you don't want it, they don't want it, that's why we cancel. This uh it happened to me one time. We 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 got loan denied because they just don't have enough money. And we have to end up cancel this. And we signed a paper, which is good, but they don't they 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 uh, they kind of don't want to sign, but we asked them to sign, and later they did sign. That's like uh, after we already struggled in after months already. We didn't, we couldn't close because, and we asked for extension of a loan contingency mm -hmm. because we find out they really cannot have, they just don't have money to buy. So mm -hmm. we really have to close and get our deposit back. So we did that. And they, fortunately, they did sign, so we was able to get the three percent deposit back. So you understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is this is a kind of crucial and important. Mm -hmm. and I want you to know because yeah. sometimes the seller they don't sign. <laughs> that would be. So what if they don't sign? Then we just have to keep asking them, or. <laughs> They don't sign that. I have a uh, one case right now. It happened in May, and uh, still seller don't sign. They need to go to the uh, med medi mediation. Uh. They they need to go to the mediation to to resolve that issue. So we just follow our rule. Follow our rule. Don't go over the contingency time. Mm -hmm. The reason the seller for that case didn't sign because we already released all the contingency. And seller has right to keep that money. But a buyer didn't want to hit because this you know is ten thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. So seller didn't want to sign. Man, seller wanna keep that ten thousand dollars. Even though they didn't <laughs> buy it, buyer actually was not able to buy the house. Seller mm -hmm. didn't sign. Oh, I see. So that money is still in the escrow right now because both parties didn't sign the paper. So they need to re they need to re resolve that issue by going to the court. And it's not court, it's just mediation, but still go to the court. That's in the court also. Mm -hmm. So we don't want that to happen because this is going to be time consuming and uh, waste people's money and waste people's time. Because you go to mediation, not just you, you need to hire a lawyer and you need to pay lawyer for this. So, and then it's not like you say you want to do it today, they give you today. No, you wait in a waiting line, waiting list for your your court day, oh. and which is happened probably in a year. So <laughs> that's very complicated. Not just time consuming and waste time. And then if you you are you know go to work, and you have school, and then this will bother you for a long long time. I know. <laughs> so we don't want this to happen. We want it to be smooth and get it quickly as possible. If seller don't sign, just buy the house. Mm -hmm. Just buy the house. There's no other way you can do it. I mean, you want, <laughs> <laughs> or you lose, you just lose your, uh, lose your three percent. Yeah. But I, you know, I, my thing is, uh, you are buying the house. Mm -hmm. Just, just get a house. That's my thing. Yeah. Unless there's really something the seller didn't do right, then we go to mediation. But usually, seller they would do everything correct, and then they have a they have an agent to help too. Mm -hmm. So you understand? Yeah. This is very important. This is very very important. I didn't know that important of a contingency until I see that happen, and so I would advise everyone. We follow the day exactly. The transaction coordinator will come up with the, with the, he she will come up with the, the exact day we need to perform all four conditions by the day. Mm -hmm. So when we get into a contract, oh, there's no we, we don't waste time. We don't waste time. We need to do it right away. Mm -hmm. You know everything turned in and make sure we we get the approval from loan and then the appraisal. Make sure you know we pay the money and then we get them to get a report. And uh, if 
price is close enough, we'll fine, we go with that. And we go exactly sales price and then, you know, uh, pay the money and we just move forward and uh, ask them to repair. If they repair, that's good. They give us credit, that's good. And we just move forward to get this done. That's the most important thing. Want to have you, that is kind of like a, make people worry, but don't worry because uh, this is what everybody go through. Okay. <laughs> don't worry. Everybody buy a house, they all go through this process. So yeah. you don't have to worry about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So ver final verification of condition, that's a, that's a final walkthrough. I need to be performed five days before closing, five days before close of escrow before you sign the paper five days, I need to go there to check again, make sure everything is good. Mm -hmm. By that time, probably all the furniture is gone already. But. <laughs> 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 okay, so, uh, and then repair. Now, repair should be completed prior to final verification. So they need to get this done before those days. So we, you know, just within a month, we see how many things we need to do. That's a lot of things, really, I mean, so I, there's no no joke, really no joke. We can ask for extension. We can ask for contingency extension. We can ask for close escrow extension as well. When something can come up right or they need a repair time, we can ask for, that's not a problem. Okay, so this is a perform. They need to make sure they have a, find the right people to do this right job and perform and then so I can go do the five days before closing of the escrow for the walk through. Mm -hmm. Preparation of tax then we this are the the set date before that day belongs to the buyer uh, belongs to the seller after that day belongs to you the pay the tax. And then sometimes they'll be withholding the tax for you to help you to pay from the escrow, which is good. So you don't need to worry about it because you just take over the house, which I think is very good for you. Mm -hmm. Broker compensation, that means we'll get paid, but we not get paid by you. We get paid by the seller. Mm -hmm. So basically I do the free service for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, scope of duty, that means uh, there's thing we need to let you know we need to let you know, and then we will make sure our work is good. Uh, the condition, I also, we <clears throat> there's no guarantee of the condition of the property. <clears throat> when, when you take over the house, that you already know there are a lot of defects, a lot of problems in the house, but it's not major thing, it's just here and there. And so that's why they say the condition is not, cannot be guaranteed. Uh, and it also does not decide that price buyers should pay or sellers should accept, does not guarantee the performance, adequacy, or uh, completeness of inspection service products or repair provided by the seller or others, does not have obligation to conduct an inspection of common areas or area that's a side of a uh, off site of the property. That means only inside the house. Outside the house is out of hand. Uh, should not be responsible for identifying defects of the property in common area offsite unless the defects are visually observable by the inspection of, of reasonably accessible area of the property are known to broker should not be responsible for inspection, inspecting prop public records or permits concerning the title of use of the property. Should not be responsible for identifying the location of boundary lines or other items affecting title. Should not be responsible for identifying square footage re representations of others or information contained in investigation reports, multiple listing services, advertising flyers or other promotional material. Should not be responsible for determining the fair market value of the property or any personal property, including the sale. Should not be responsible for 
providing legal or tax advice regarding any aspect of transfer transaction we enter the enter the buyer or seller should not be responsible for providing other advice or information that information experience required to perform real estate license activity buyers or seller agree to seek legal tax insurance title other desired assistance for the appropriate professionals one thing i want to let you know is uh you buy the house your information is with the escrow Mm -hmm. Your information will be with uh, the multiple listing service and uh, the, the information they obtain, I don't know, somehow will leak out to other people. Then when you move into a house, there will be some sort of sales, like insurance will contact you or maybe the ADD, ATD, you know, those uh, surveillance camera, mm -hmm. those security company, they will contact you. Yeah, they know you buy a house. Mm -hmm. the information, even though we keep it quite private, but somehow it becomes public information. <laughs> so some of the selling company, they know you move into a house. You might need a security camera, you know. Uh -huh. You might need uh, insurance, or you might need, uh, after you move in some sort of product regarding to a new house, you move in. And they will contact you to try to sell you something. So they just want you to know this can be possible. Mm -hmm. okay. And representative uh, capacity. Also, you will receive uh, the prior, the prior from other tax service, ask you to go with them to pay your tax. Please do not accept that. That's, it looks like legitimate uh, okay. prior. Oh, but that they are not from the county, okay? They are from the private company. They try to help you to pay, but you need to pay a service fee for them. Don't don't accept that. You will you will you will receive it. They will send it to you. Just like okay. those information will be out there, they can easily obtain mm -hmm. your information, and they will contact you. They will send you the flyer, ask you to you know pay the tax with them through them. But there was a service fee, but don't don't do that. Don't do that because uh, mm -hmm. you receive that. Because uh, mm -hmm. several of my customers they did receive that. So, oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thanks for letting me know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh quite long, right? I'm sorry, it does take us just long. No, no, time. <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah, I mean, I was really like, thank you for your time today. Walk me through these because it's helped me a lot, like to understand the entire process. I mean, for me, it's the like first time. So it's really kind of like uh, meaningful and useful for me to go through these in detail so that I can understand the process. So, I mean, I mean, like uh, in the worst case, if we cannot, I mean, if, if we got reject for this one, we can look for the other one and the process is going to be go better because I would understand the entire thing. Yeah. yeah. But you will be surprised. A lot of customers don't even want to read this. <laughs> oh, I see. No, I mean, I, I really like the way that you do because... <laughs> you know, <laughs> Especially when I deal with the mobile home, uh -huh. mobile home, even though you go through this, they, they don't really care. They just, <laughs> they don't want to move in. They want to buy and move in. <laughs> uh, I, think, uh, I think it's good to know the, all this information for you. And mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it's really important too, because it's like my rise in here. So I just want to make sure I understand so that if there is any problem, I mean, we can process further. I mean, yeah. faster. Because yes, I was like, because on your end, you know everything, but on my end, I start learning things like, like through this one. So it's, it's really useful for me to kind of like go through this in detail so that maybe in the future, I don't kind of like wasting your time asking a lot of questions. <laughs> oh, no, no, I, mean, I think it's yeah. good to ask. Yeah, I, I kind of like get like the idea of the entire process. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So represent. The representative capacity, I represent you and you be uh I'll be representing you to help you to buy this process, buy this house process. Basically, that's what it is say. And the next one, 20, is a join of escrow, which is the more important. You know, uh, join of escrow means uh that when you pay 20% under, that uh, they will be escrow holder for you to help you to collect this insurance, the tax and 
so that they can pay properly to the insurance and tax. Make sure you can pay. But right now you're 20%. So it is uh, for the closing. The, they, the, they will first collect the 3% and then later collect 70% for the closing and the closing cost. And uh -huh. that closing cost, they will be, <coughs> they help you to collect or some sort of a transaction fee and then you need to pay their fee as well for the closing escrow fee for the title company. All that is gonna be in the account. Uh, you will be giving that account. So when you pay, you pay to the escrow account. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all the closing costs is paid to the escrow account. Yes. And the down payment is paid to whatever the seller's like account. Or maybe yeah, the you seller. You pay to uh, escrow. Escrow collect all the money, and oh. deduct all the costs the seller owes, the rest of it, and then and deduct oh, all of, and then, yeah, the rest he he get a leftover. <laughs> okay, so, I, so on pay. yeah, so on our side we pay everything to the escrow company, yes. and then the escrow company did the rest, distribute the money to the rest of whoever really. Yes, to yes, 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 yes. Pay everything, and he get a leftover. Basically, that's what it is. <laughs> 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 yeah. So you see the three days that we need to pay initial deposit. The first three days. Uh, mm -hmm. The property address, the uh, broker. Uh, so only the purpose, the only one purpose, uh, broker the uh, compensation. That's when the seller pay to us. So seller paid need to pay a lot of things, not just pay to this. And you see the, also the seller broker need to verify the buyer's deposit funds. So when you pay that, they need to verify the money. Actually, they'll be performed by escrow company. So you don't, you don't need to worry about that. Mm -hmm. Escrow holders should immediately notify the broker. As soon as they receive your money, they should tell the seller say, okay, receive the initial deposit. And uh, so that we can move forward for the rest of the process which is just beginning. Cause remember we have a full contingency to work on. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, and if we ever get into the, if a uh, remedy is for buyers breach of contract, that's when I talk to you about the mediation, uh, then we will go to the court, not a court, a mediation. Yeah, any cost added by parties specifying a remedy such as release or forfeit of a deposit or making a deposit non-refundable for failure of buyer, that's mm -hmm. us, to mm -hmm. complete the purchase in violation of this agreement, shall be deemed invalid unless the clause independent satisfies the statutory liquidated damage requirements set forth in the civil code. You remember that civil court? Mm -hmm. That means if uh, we need to, we 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 failed it. We failed to. We failed to do whatever we need to do. Then they cannot just release the money to us because they are not gonna sign the paper. Mm -hmm. And in that case, we can, we need to go to the court to resolve the issue and uh, liquidate the damages. If seller fails to complete the purchase because seller's default. That means we didn't do our, our job because we didn't do our job that cost sales got, the, got not incomplete mm -hmm. and then seller should retain as liquidated damage. We didn't do our job and they, you know, that cost incomplete sales, the failure, that money, the initial deposit belongs to the seller. Mm -hmm. Agent don't even get it. I don't get it. Seller agent don't get it. We don't get it. Only the seller can get it. Oh, I see. Okay. So that initial nineteen five, you put deposit. Once you put that money in there, we need to be very, very hard working to try to accomplish everything. Mm -hmm. You know, so that we don't end up result in this in this stage. This would be very bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. And to resolve the dispute mediation that I talk about the mediation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the arbitration, mediation is the first step. Whatever the result is, if you not agree, then you need to go to arbitration. 
Arbitration is a final verdict. Whatever the judge says is the final, no more. Mediation mm -hmm. is a, if you agree, then, you know, then no more. You agree, then no more. They, they take the money. If you not agree, then you go to the next step, which is the arbitration. Then arbitration is uh, like a court type, which we don't want to go through because it will be another day and time. That's my, maybe already three, four years later. So <laughs> don't want to do that. I just, I just waste your time. Yeah. Okay, so I... Uh, so you see this, there will be uh, throughout this entire purchase agreement, there will be initial, you need to sign. Mm -hmm. Every every single initial on this page, especially this page, when you come to sign this, remember you will see this remedy for buyer breach contract. And there's uh, this initial right here, only you, you only by yourself. When you click on this page, this is a page of a buyer's breach of contract, 22, 21, 22. And then there's another one right here. And there's another one right here. There are three total you need to initial. They will be, it just go ahead, just click, click, click. But this page is a page eight right now. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I, I have this many, many times with the buyer, they click on their cell phone. Sometimes, these three boxes, one of these three boxes of thing will not go through. Mm -hmm. When they get back to the computer, when I receive through a computer form, when you click only your initial, but sometimes one of these three, the entire this 20 something pages, only this page, sometimes it didn't go through. I don't know why, but I will let you know if it didn't go through for you to sign one more time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know why is that because it happened many, many times, many, just many times, many times. Mm -hmm. I see. So I will come back to you and say, please sign this page. You know, you just click one more time, mm -hmm. and so you go through. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you sign the first time, just uh, be very little bit careful. When you sign, just click the right, uh, slowly click and you'll be able to go through. Oh, you can do it on computer to click on the computer, which yeah, is more forward. Yeah. yeah, it's better, it's easier to use as well, yeah. Yeah. And then this is a uh, preservation of the action. It should not be constitute a waiver or violation of mediation. They still talk about a core thing, so I just want to go through this. You see, there is a, there's an attorney fee when you go to the all this mediation, then. There's also uh, just all this is just explanation right now. Mm -hmm. So just remember, this is the most important thing right here. But we don't want to go there. We don't want to go there because it will be very hard for people. Mm -hmm. Multiple listing service, which is remember, I send you all these houses, the information, the price. I send you the email for the house information. That's called the MLS. The one you search on the zero, you send it to me for the house information. That's called MLS. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay, this, so this is a just explanation. So I think it's fine. Mm -hmm. And now it comes to definition of each term they are talking about. Mm -hmm. We already know pretty much we need to know. And uh, this is buyer sign. Uh, okay. Remember the, we, so you can sign today and we give them 650 for two days for the seller to consider to take your offer. By October 29th, which is two days later, that's the Thursday, by five o'clock, they need to give us a, the answer, see if they accept our offer for $650,000 or not. We give them two days to think about it. If they agree, then they will come down to here to sign the, uh, right here. They will say, they will initial right here, confirm of acceptance. And seller will sign right here. And the day, uh, 
what you accept, which will be 10, 29 sometime, and the initial, that means he accept you. Once that is done, I need to send it back to them and say we, uh, we also accept. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question. So when we submit the offer, if they reject, that this one. do they do counter offer? Yeah, they, they, if, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good question. They have a counter, they can counter offers. If they think our price is too low, they will say, we need to stick with a 675. Or they will say, okay, can you raise up to 660? You know, they will ask you for this kind of questions. And that'll be up to you that if you want the seven. Usually, we would think about a range, the acceptable range that you think that you want it. You know what I'm saying? You think about, let's say, uh, we do have a 650, but what about 660? Are we accepting that? Because your loan is going to be approved for maybe 700. Mm -hmm. So you do have a, the uh, flexible range to accept the pricing mm -hmm. then it'll be up to you if you wanted to accept that pricing mm, i see yeah so it, it is uh really uh it's good and uh the only big thing i can tell you right now regarding to this is uh you have a uh, you have a uh, the car parking garage that can make extra room out of the house which is good because if you buy other condo they don't have a attached parking garage they only have a carport or they park outside the parking lot but you don't use that as a car parking you use that for extra room which is a smart move because even if other people want to do they can't do it they don't have that kind of a environment for them to do it so it is a good thing for you and remember when you sell a house later on in 10 20 years later give that back to make that back to the original to become the parking garage because that was the purpose for you understand what i'm saying right mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so that that would be the only thing right now is uh, because you you have a uh, many family members that need a room so you use that as a room but uh, later on if you sell the house again later you can keep forever. You can keep, uh, you know, until everybody die and <laughs> <to leave. laughs> But you, you also can make a decision. You want to sell the house fifteen years after. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that that's up to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, final goal, my my thinking, my thinking, final goal should be living in the single family house. Mm -hmm. That you don't need to pay some sort of HOA, or you pay HOA, but it's your freestanding, your one building house, yeah, attached to other neighbor. But this can be because you have uh, many family members. This can be your sister's family, you know. You understand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You buy a second house, they can become your brother's family. Right. Yeah. Your parents That's what there, you know, and mm -hmm. you move out to somewhere else. That would be good. That would be very ideal. Mm -hmm. because then you they get more space. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I think right now, I mean, we kind of like just like start. So that's why we, we wanted to start with something small. And then once everyone, like at least my brother and sister, kind of like uh, got away from school, have a job, then then yeah, we're going to kind of like gradually move out. So that's why I was asking you like um, if I can add my brother into like the beneficiary. So it's going to be just like 
like maybe easier like later if I need to transfer the title to him because I mean for sure I'm going to move out like a couple of years later but yeah okay but now we're not together yeah okay so this is uh, the purchase agreement uh okay the, this one is buyer's inspection advisory that means we suggest you to do your own inspection usually people hire inspector pay that much money to do the inspection mm -hmm. and but that's 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 what we say usually people don't even spend money <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they just go with the seller's inspection and then they, they wanted to be able to move in that's all that's depending really depending on you we we as a realtor we actually highly recommend all the buyers to do their own investigation uh you don't have to spend money you can go with uh, whatever you have that's their report and go from there to ask them to do a repair or you basically understand what you need to do once you move into the house. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. basically that's uh that's just what it is. Mm -hmm. So this one is a buyer's invest invest in inspection advisory. If you decide you want to do it, let me know. I we research the best price for you. If you decide you don't want to do it, let me know because they are signed, they they'll be formed to sign. They are like an inspection waiver and the uh, election for inspection there are two forms need to sign i'll show it to you later yeah uh, i mean like right now for that place um i mean like um uh, beside like a couple things in the house the, the mm -hmm. thing that i'm kind of worried the most is the termite condition and the fungus in the garage mm -hmm. would basically um because i mean like the termite is going to be kind of like a, a kind of like annoying issue because it's going to be a fact like the like the the i mean the other neighbor that have like the same walk with us mm -hmm. so that it's going to be kind of like difficult in terms of like if we ever have to need like to do like the termite treatment or if anything because i mean right now i can't find any detail because in the termite report it's mentioned like like part of the thing is got damaged by the termite but they didn't specify like how or kind of like how in like how serious that is so yeah, we, we will go through that we will go through that and then we find out what exactly we need to ask them to perform mm -hmm. yeah later we go because we we gotta we we'll take you some time but i think it's good so you have a basic understanding comprehensive basically understanding of the house i think it's not bad mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, this next one is a Consumer Privacy Act advisory. Just like I say, you know, you buy the house, your information will be out there, and uh, they will be you'll be getting contact for those other vendors that try to sell you things, like insurance or security camera or other house related product. They try to sell it to you. Uh -huh. You'll be probably be contacted by these salespeople. Mm -hmm. Uh, that so basically that's this form is about mm -hmm. okay so we're done with this and uh is in your is in your email you can uh, check and you can click to mm -hmm. sign a paper because mm -hmm. once you sign i need to sign it too so mm -hmm. i we, we sign that and we get it done and i need to ask franco about when will be that pre-approval letter ready he say one day but it's two oh, days oh, oh. Oh, he didn't email you? I mean, I think he emailed me um, either yesterday or the day before. So I can forward the email to you. He emailed me the pre-approval letter. Oh, really? I think, yeah. really did it. Okay, so can you email um, me? I can submit that. So uh, let's sign this first. You can do it on the computer. Your email sign first. And I have all your information. I need to submit that to the... Uh, once you sign, there will be email come to me, tell me to sign. I uh, sign. And there'll be email come to me, complete the form, and I collect that and I save them on my computer, along with uh, the pre-approval letter you send, you receive it, and I can send it in to the seller. And I can do it right now in 10 minutes. So let's do this right now. You can go ahead, go go do yourself, and uh, uh, later on we, we can go through the, uh, the seller's disclosures and report. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, let me take some time to go through this because I mean, about the price, um, 
I just actually want to check with you. Do you think you I go lower? Yeah, I want to go lower because I mean, I afraid that there's a couple things that I have to fix on my end, especially the termite condition was kind of risky for me. So I was thinking if I can go lower and then, I mean, uh, uh, okay, um, we can go a little lower, but how much you want to go? Okay. 5,000? Okay, you take counter offer from them. Uh, if you want to go, then uh, don't sign the paper because that paper stay with the uh, 650. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I haven't. Stay yeah. with it here. But I, I suggest not to go too low because go too low, they might not accept our offer. Mm. You understand? Know so uh, did you think like, what is like the reasonable low so that we can uh, go up? I, I yeah. say we drop $2,000 to 648. Oh, I see seven dollars. Yeah, because uh because they at six seventy-five, we already dropped twenty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. Which I think is reasonable. Because when we ask them to when we ask them to do this, we when we ask them to perform, they will actually either give us a credit or they need to spend their own money. Mm -hmm. Uh which I I don't know if that's gonna be part, but remember we have a contingency to protect us, so that they can be a, they can be scared that we you know they can be they can be they feel a little bit afraid of a that we're gonna get out of contract, so they will do something about it. Mm -hmm. But uh, so it's uh, it's up to you. You wanna go low, but also, there can be consequence that they don't accept our offer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's just that's just basically what I think that's gonna happen. But mm -hmm. you, you, however you wanna do it, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, let me think about that a bit because everything, everything looks okay to me, especially, the, I mean, just to my kind of like concern me so that uh, that's why I, I kind of like thinking about the price, but I mean, everything else, the thing that you go over with me on the form, I'm good. So let me just like um think a bit about the price and then I will confirm with you the price to put on that and then I will sign and get it back to you, the form. Okay, but uh, let me share with you another thing here. Mm -hmm. They, uh, you, you can see this, right? Right now is, uh, the disclosure. This one is from the from the the condo, the uh, the association, homeowner association. Mm -hmm. Remember, we talk about two hundred fifty dollars for the transaction fee. We uh -huh. ask the owner to pay, which is right here. Uh -huh. And then they will collect two months, cause all the way to the end of the year. So they will collect two months of uh, advance, one hundred fifty dollars each month. Total two months is three hundred dollars for the homeowner association fee from you. Uh -huh. And that's to be that will be in the escrow. So uh -huh. I want to show you this. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's start with the beginning, very beginning. This all these are just the homeowner association, which is in the disclosure. I think it's very good because they already give to you, so that. Right, let's start with this first page and then they may make it bigger. Oh, this is not even the first page. This is the first page right here. So this is uh, the seller's disclosure. They're gonna tell you everything they have. First is a map and the address, the selling agent. And then there's a phone number right here. This is selling the escrow. This is escrow, Sherry is the escrow officer. When you pay the money, Old Republic Title Company, this is when you pay your first initial money, 3%, your title paid to this company. And in that, you need to write the escrow number, which is doesn't show here, later on it will show. And it's better to get information directly from Sherry herself, so mm -hmm. that you write a check to the proper escrow number, the title company name, Mm -hmm. title to them and write the address of the house, which is this one mm -hmm. uh, on the check. So they know that this is for that check for the house 
and they know that's a proper escrow number and they know that to the title company. Okay. Mm -hmm. Same thing when you do your closing risk of 17% plus the closing cost, same thing you need to do it over there as well. So you understand? Mm -hmm. okay. So, and then there will be, we we'll need to submit the offer. So we'll let's do it as soon as possible. And then there's a form we need to do, and then the offer due date we already have, which will give them two days. Disclosure, this is disclosure, we already get it. Uh, not include the offer, we already have offer. Purchase agreement, we already have. Send the email, we have the email, we, we send it through the email. I already have your bank account statement, five of them, and I already waiting for you to sign the purchase agreement and the pre-approval letter. I'm going to collect everything. I can send it all at once as attachment, the email, send it to the seller agent, and they can present it to the seller. Seller mm -hmm. make a decision they want to take our offer or not. The disclosure packet we already have right here. This is our disclosure packet. That, now, see, the seller is looking for a type of offer, highest and best. Highest and best, they have a 675. Mm -hmm. have, uh, that's assuming we have 650. Mm -hmm. As is, they say as is, which means whatever that is not good, probably will be on our own. But we still want to ask them to see how much they can help us to repair. If they don't do repair because based on as is, then it would be very hard for us. We can say, we want you to give us some credit for repairing or you help us to repair some of these items, or we just have to do it by ourselves if they don't agree with anything because they already say it's as is. And we can mm -hmm. ask for lower price just because they say for the as is. Mm -hmm. but we give our best and highest offer anyway, which is what we think the price of the house should be. Now deposit limited one business day written in contract so as soon as they sign the paper, they want us to make a deposit in one day, even though the contract says three days, mm -hmm. but they want us to pay in one day. The 3% uh, But 3%, that's mm -hmm. correct, 3%, yes. Whatever the uh, the agreed price, 3% of that. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now we say it's a 650, mm -hmm. so we get with 650. Mm -hmm. Over must be a set company by, you see pre-approval letter right here? Mm -hmm. and a variety of fun, which I already have. Mm -hmm. And disclosure pack received fully signed. Wow, they want us to sign this disclosure package right away. Which I don't think we want to sign. We just want to give them approval fun for the bank account statement and also pre-approval pre letter. And uh, but they want us to have this one to be signed disclosure, we just barely go through right now. And email to this, so we will email to that. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. 24 hours. Mm -hmm. They would, oh, they even better, they would give us, they would present it and give us back in 24 hours. That's even better than that for two days. Mm -hmm. So faster. Mm -hmm. Now is uh, all the, uh, Disclosure package. First one, natural hazard disclosure, which we are we want the 51 page. Second one is a preliminary title report, home inspection, disclosure from the seller, and rules inspection, termite inspection. And there's an article incorporating this is a HOA, okay? And then age restrictions. This is a, a covenants and restrictions by law and uh, operation rule and uh, annual budget, this is for HOA. Oh, that's a lot of papers. Investment. Yeah, that's a lot of things we need to go through. Uh, financial statement is HOA's financial statement, tell you how much they have money left, what is the planning for the budget, maybe for some sort of repairment, some sort of a remedy, some sort of a, you know expansion maybe they have. And there's, this insurance is buying for the entire complex and doesn't cover you because you need to buy your own home insurance. This mm -hmm. is just for the entire complex insurance. 
Oh, actually, that's just reminding me. Like, uh, do you know what is a uh, one fifty dollar per month HOA fee cover? He says a common area maintenance. You know, to me, the common area it looks like only the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, that's true, right? Uh, <laughs> so they, that's why they don't have a lot of charges. You know. <laughs> uh, okay, so I have. To, I, oh, I even see they have a swimming pool. Or, yeah, it doesn't look like because yeah, I mean, yeah. if they have swimming pool, the HOA probably go much higher. Yeah, but, I think, yeah because the um, do you know if so? I have to pay for my old electricity, water, garbage, and stuff. I believe so. So for like the series, do I have to pay or is including the HOA? No, 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 no. Even no, 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 no. Even in the no, no. You you need to pay. You need to pay. It's all individual. Mm -hmm. So electricity, water, sewer, gas. If they if I think use gas. And the trash can, the trash service. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's all on you. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's so on you. Yeah, just like house. This is almost like house. The only thing is you pay HOA. Mm, that's weird. So what and is you are one wall away from your neighbor? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I think yeah, I think this one is kind of like a different because it was kind of like some sort of like a, a duplex. Mm -hmm. The other like townhouse, like normally HOA is higher, but I would say cover um other things. They cover normally garbage and water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this one, I think that doesn't, 150 is so cheap. I don't think they covered that. Yeah, even for like the 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 roof insurance, because I think I, don't, I see some other place would have HOA to have like insurance for like the roof. What is that? Or is it one half? Yeah, yeah, because the condo, they use a common roof. That's uh -huh. why, uh, but then like you say, you see, some of the remember earlier you told me there was one pay for five hundred fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. Those cover for the outside building painting and also the roof, as well as the landscaping. Mm -hmm. Some of the, even they have a basketball court, tennis <laughs> court, swimming pool. They jacuzzi. They cover all that. But I like this one doesn't have any of that. So, yeah. <laughs> so I just wonder why they collect 150 and doesn't cover yes, everything. <laughs> yes. Only pay for the the maintenance is probably just cleaning of the parking lot. You know, yeah, helping to yeah. clean the trash, make sure there's no no a lot of debris outside, you know, all that. Okay. And maybe a little bit landscaping, not in your in front of a house. The landscaping by the parking lot side. <laughs> <laughs> and then they do allow you for the rental. That means if you, your family move out and you want to rent this house, they can allow you to rent, but there's a restrictions mm -hmm. to read through. Mm, I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, are these meeting minutes? All the meeting notes, we can go through that. I would highly recommend you to go to every meeting mm. because you live there, you need to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then they ask you to sign this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to the first one really quick. Mm -hmm. This is a hazard report. Uh, okay, this is a ha this is a the uh, natural hazard report, and they just basically tell you this location is within what kind of zone. And they would say this is one is in the Santa Clara County, and uh, this is a parcel number right here. Mm -hmm. and it's 129, the address. Report date is 9-25-2020, uh, which is uh, right here. This is what kind of zone, let me see. Yeah, because I think last night when I kind of like go through these, is mentioned about this one as being in like a, some leaking something, but I was not really sure about that. But if you go down, you can you can see they check a yes on some. They mention about like um the like the underground leaking like some something like near the location used to happen near the location.
They say the <clears throat> highest best price is what they say. And we think our highest best price is this much, that's this much. And then so it's based on the seller want to agree with your price or not. Mm -hmm. So, you know. And also uh, this one, once you're done, I believe you receive a copy of uh, the, the purchase agreement. If, uh -huh. if you sign, and I, after you sign, not just you sign, but uh, after the seller sign, then that becomes a complete document. Mm -hmm. Both parties need to agree. So mm -hmm. that copy is more important than just you sign, because you sign, they don't sign, doesn't complete the part, complete the contract. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so I, this is what it is. Basically, it's, it's for you to know information. Okay. So let me move to the next one. Mm -hmm. Oh, do you know if that error ever got like flood? Uh, then we need to check here. I, I don't. You can search here. You all you do is type in flood. And they'll come here to uh, flood assessment. Okay, uh, spatial flood hazard area, no. This is not flood area. Okay. All this uh, we need to sign, okay, right here. The okay. seller, seller need to sign, buyer, buyer need to sign. Okay, so that's good. Not in the spatial flood, that's good. Okay, let's move on to next one. Santa Clara County, parcel one. Parcel two, let's just tell you this is what parcel, and this is a preliminary report by the old, title, old, old Republic title company to help you to search for this house. Basically, this is a right here, this address. Mm -hmm. So home policy, this is a home insurance policy right here. Fee is parcel one. And under this uh, lady. Oh, I thought she's a guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, the parcel number right here, the code, the installment, the repay. public service easement. This right here is called the covenants, conditions and restrictions, limitation, easements, assessments, re reservations, exceptions, turns and lien charges. Amount is this much, and the trust uh, the amount that is payable. I think this is her loan. Yeah, her loan. When she bought a house, her she borrowed this much money for this house. Mm -hmm. That was back in two thousand fourteen. Yeah, that was six years ago. So she sell you this much, and then she paid during these six years. Probably paid down some of this money. Mm -hmm. uh, when she sell then she will have to you know pay off the loan which you take part of the part of your loan amount and it pays a lot of things a lot of she owes whatever she owes looks like she doesn't know anything else 
so she get like a maybe like a hung uh four hundred thousand something like that, or maybe three hundred mm -hmm. seventy eighty thousand dollars after all the thing that pay off. Mm -hmm. This is a deductible amount policy. If something happened, then this will cover. But so far, it looks not. This will tell you what they do, the service, and what their condition. How is everything covered? And this, all this, you because you already you haven't signed, but you already have it. So this you want to keep for your information, because it's quite important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Next one. Okay, this comes to the uh, inspection. So you only see the red thing, okay? The red is the one that I need to improve. That right, right here. They have a picture to show you. Deterioration use noted after tiles and overcharged at the various locations. A qualified train carpenter contractor should be called to make a repairs needed. Now, first thing you see that's a uh, the outside uh, landscaping for irrigation, for a water spraying the water, it sounds like uh, this is inoperable. Recommend to, because this one, I believe you will, you will have to have uh, your father or somebody to help to make change. I think of the, it looks like a part is uh, not working fine. Mm -hmm. So your father might be one of working on this. This is a very important thing for you to keep this information so that you can you can know you, you know where to fix. This one, the general condition is uh, overhanging appearance of serviceable. Where is this place? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what it's a place because it looked like there's some like a damage to that, but yeah. Oh, this is outside the house. This is under the roof. Under the roof. <laughs> Maybe like the the overhang like on the ex exterior, but I'm not yes, sure where. Yes, yes, outside uh, the roof structure. These do need to ask them to repair, but I always it looks like they they are not gonna repair for this thing. For all, all this, that's the reason we ask for lower price. Yeah, that's right. Cause I mean, yeah, I mean, at least based on the report, there's like a couple of things that has to be fixed. Yes. Inside and outside. So that's why I was thinking about lowering the price so that I can fix like later. The only thing that concerns me the most is just the fungus and the termite. Okay, uh, then we, we walk through this, your basic understanding. Uh, mm -hmm. Plumbing system, this water heater. There is a water heat is not correctly inaccurately secured. This one is yeah. very important to me because the appraisal will, will, will hold this accountable, that which is right here, this one. Yeah. And also they mentioned here like the, for the water heater, the approximate, I mean, right now it's like nine years, but they said like the average is like 10 to 12 years, but basically I have to fix it soon too. And that's so, why uh, the remember the uh, home homeowner warranty that uh -huh. coming handy for you because you can ask because you have a cover then you can ask them to come based on the inspection you might be able to change a new one for seventy five dollars which is a very good price. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it has to be within a year, right? Since uh, yeah, they only buy for you for one year coverage, so you want to do it like after six months. Mm -hmm. But then, if let's say for example, it doesn't well, I mean, let's say for example, it's still functionable, but I want to replace because it's like 10 years old. 
can they do that or and that's up that I, I i don't i don't it's up to them right yeah yeah i think it's up to them mm -hmm. but uh there should be a reason if you turn on there's a sound very loud that's that's a sign mm -hmm. and you can use that to tell them that's the sign that you want to replace mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which okay. is understandable mm -hmm. Wood deterioration observed to garage vehicle door at the time of inspection. The garage door, this is the part. We already we, we see this. We see this. Yeah. So this one, I thought this is a termite, but this is not termite. Mm -hmm. The opening wall and uh, Firewall compromised. That's right here. Okay, let's start with this repair. This outside, mm -hmm. so it's good. We only see red. Okay, we already know this irrigation. Yeah, they was mentioned that some issue with that, but the picture, I'm not sure what that is. Oh, ah, that's the picture it was about, okay. Yeah. This one, they were talking about a pipe. No, no, not the pipe, not not that one. The look like some roof, I mean, like the hangover from the roof, like from oh, outside. Yeah, 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 yeah. They have a picture for that, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Right here, that one, this one, this one, yeah. That one need to be fixed, yes. Mm -hmm. This is a firebox interior panel. Living room wood. Burn wood. I think I checked this is our fireplace. Remember, we go into a fireplace to check because I read this in advance. I, I go into the, but I still cannot find anything. But we don't use it anyway. So it looks like they burn something and then it caused the, the color discolored. Oh, I see. Oh, 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 I see in the living room, like the small fireplace in that. Yes, and you know, I open it and check inside. Mm -hmm. And this this was dusty, but they cleaned it. Remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was the one that need to probably need to repair. Yeah. They okay. Can you go up a bit? Because about that, there was mentioned about like the water pressure is low, and then that's a forty pound per square inch. The considered low. Higher pressure. I don't know how to make adjustment on the higher pressure. <laughs> but uh, they might know. There are. There should be adjustment over there somewhere. Water heater is the main problem. Yeah, true. Okay, so you see that that this 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 need must fix. Mm -hmm. You need to get an extension pipe to get it down to the drain pane. Mm -hmm. This one we can ask them to do it because this one this one is even on the appraisal. Appraisal can call us not proof because this is not. Properly installed for the water heater. 
is very is a major major problem. Not in is is not act correctly in act inadequately secured and needs to be strapped in coordinates with the local st standards. Very important. Mm -hmm. This one, the appraisal can appraisal can hold us can hold us responsible. So we gotta be very careful. We gotta make sure I would write them to tell them to fix the problem because uh, appraisal oh, may not, appraisal gonna ask yeah they like might a... may not approve you know if they appraisal doesn't approve they come back you need to pay another five hundred dollars or something for reinspection re reappraisal that's very expensive so we okay. need to ask them to to do it to to do it for them to do it oh. just to pass oh. oh I see so they have to do it before the appraisal come that is correct Oh. You see, that's very that's important. Okay, so, you know, that's why it is a very big contingency right there. Mm -hmm. And you see this cover? We we already check on both of them. Both of them is not secure. Mm -hmm. So we need to ask them to see if they can secure this thing. Mm -hmm. This uh, shouldn't be a big thing, but it just too, it just, and you know, they might need, they might want to tell people to come by and do all this. Hey, what was that? Yeah, there's a lot of thing right buying a house. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not that easy, but um, especially for a condo, this this type of a house is a uh, it just all is just there, you know. Yeah. So I, I think this pipe is extremely important, very important, Thanks. and then also they need to make sure this is properly secure. This one we right. will ask them to do it. Yeah. Okay. If they don't, your brother live in the parking garage, then that's that's even more important. Mm -hmm. But don't tell them your brother live in a parking garage. Oh, no, 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 no. It's just out of fun. Not sure if I want to do that or not. Yeah, because. Okay. Wood door. Uh, this is a parking garage. Mm -hmm. and this is a crowd space. I don't know what's wrong with the crowd space. Vehicle gar garage vehicle door at a time deterioration. Recommend for evaluation repair. Ah, uh, this door doesn't close right. This door doesn't close right. Might need to ask them. They probably don't do anything. If they think it's acceptable. But after your father take over, might want to put a spring on top of the on top of the door to make sure you can close right. Is this the door from the garage to the living room? Uh, yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Yes. Service door. Yeah. Make sure this one is uh, can be self close. Oh. And uh, this is uh, what is that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know what the way is that. They are opening. Uh, oh, this is parking garage. Yeah, all the pipelines are here. There's a hole here. This hole here. I think that need to be repaired. I think. Well, and file. I think this one needs to repair. Otherwise, the appraiser cannot 
were not proof. I have one situation. The there's a hole on the floor, and we didn't think that was a problem, but appraisal hold that to be very important. He didn't okay. approve. Appraisal is a to me is a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't approve. Wait. I have a question. So in the worst case, if like, let's say for example, this one, if we didn't fix and the appraiser didn't approve, and then if it passed at the 17 days, then how, how did that go? We need to, if that approved, we need to ask for extension first. Uh -huh. And then we need to ask the seller to repair this. Uh -huh. They repair everything fine and then we can, then we can do it. I see. But when the uh, uh, like the appraisal come back to, to do, who want to pay for it? Uh, it will be on us. It will be on the, on the buyer because it's our we buy. So we need to ask them to do it. All this, before they even come to the appraisal, we already need to ask them to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Otherwise, it's going to cause a lot of problems. There's a lot of problems. Right. I think also that's the reason why this house was not sold immediately. Yeah, that's, so I think that's probably the reason. Yeah, so I think it's been on the market for like a couple yes. days. Yeah, go ahead. Oh yeah, no, I mean like I see this one is on the market for like um quite a while, like more than 10 days. Yeah. And then I think from the outside, it looks good. But at the inside, there's like a, like a, multiple issue maybe that's why it was not gone like yeah last, like the other one because i like the other one you remember the one in marquee uh -huh. like new marquee it was like 500 or something but it was like a small townhouse it was really nice and you see it got like i was seeing like on the market today tomorrow is pending it's really fast yeah you remember that one it was like like i think near marquee supermarket like mm -hmm. on the on the back of marquee yeah. Super like it. it was really fast. Yeah. The, the problem like this is uh, sometimes people don't want to travel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can tell me what the price you like to offer. Maybe 645 or 6 645. I think it's not bad. Oh, here's just the explanation. Okay, let's go to the next. This one is uh, so called the, the disclosure statement, seller disclosure, where, where seller tell you everything he knows about a house. So all you do is uh, check the one that they say yes. Say no, that'd be fine. So it say yes, that's proper. So they tell you this house has a range, oven, a microwave, display, everything. They tell you everything they have. They have a sprinkler. That's why we have single problem. If they don't have sprinkler, then we probably don't have problem. Oh, what is a sprinkler? Sprinkler is uh, the outside. Remember the water pound, 40 pounds, uh, the pressure not enough. That's what he was talking about. Mm. The water heater uses gas. The water supply from the city, mm. from the utility company for the gas. So we look into those these things right here. And the buyer need to sign. All this we need to sign. Mm Disclosure, they have a, they already have agent walk through disclosure. So it's right here, inspection agents do. They walk through and uh, now this one, I need to walk through too. So it's me and I'll sign this later on. Mm -hmm. Let's go very fast. I cannot hold this. Okay, so they, they tell you whatever agency Agent even tell you what he sees about this house with no good. And uh, he write down everything, which is thorough. Mm -hmm. See like this, 
discolor the cement marks of the door, wear and tear to floor, lines broken, marks of the wall. Now here it says that uh, <clears throat> bedroom number two, this color paint. You might, before you move in, you might want to spend some time to paint the house for a mm -hmm. new painting. I think it's probably necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, bathroom two, there's a hallway, this color grout. Grout, you know, is the ceiling between the tile and between that. I don't know if uh, your father can do this job because mm -hmm. uh, you want to make it more appearing, more fresh. Before you moving, I think all this redo is necessary mm -hmm. before you moving mm -hmm. to tear down you know, all this thing right here. They will tell you all this. Okay, now come to the seller. The seller tell you everything he knows, she knows about. If you see yes, you need to pay attention. She know, you can just let it go. Mm -hmm. uh, here comes the one yes right here. Water intrusion may any physical, that means water leaks into the house. And then there'll be explanation right here, right here. There is a leak above the garage ceiling. The leak was fixed in 2017. The sheet rock was, was what did say that? Yeah, I was, I was, uh, yeah, I was about to ask that one too. I was missing the entire <laughs> It was okay. very strange. It was not finished. But it seems like they fixed the problem back in 2017. Oh. And there's another yes right here. Here, oh, they mentioned they have a termite in 2018. Hmm. Termite in 2018. Created exterior inside some walls. Did not see any problems since. Hmm. Now this, we can ask them because we got I found dollars for them to help us to fix. We'll see how that goes. Landscaping, original sprinkler. Yes, there's a yes right here. So let's see what it is. Automatic only cover the front lawn. So yeah, they have a sprinkler and then they, they do have you to see the picture. Mm -hmm. This one, it looks like they are not going to fix. So when you come, you can either try to fix it or you wanted to have somebody professional to see what's going on. So that costs money. So if uh, anyone know, <clears throat> you already know some sort of a pipeline, the water. To my knowledge, things like this, usually there is uh, some sort of block in the water pipeline yeah. cause the imbalance of uh, water pressure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what we have so far. Oh, we already go through the sprinkler. What's this? Water heater. Water heater, raise the, uh, yes, it's good. But water sorry, heater- what does that mean? Uh, is a uh, covered, is a strip, strapped. Water heater strapped. Oh. Uh, to the, uh, the falling during the earthquake. Uh -huh. So they're afraid because the water heater is on top of something. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, the base has to be stable. Uh -huh. And then they have to be strapped. That means they need to be covered by the, so that they don't wobble. They don't, uh -huh. not, they'll be sta not stable. And sometimes the water is inside too high. And because the bottom is not secure, then that will cause 
fall down of the uh, water heater that causes problem because inside is the hot water. Mm -hmm. So that, that can be a problem. That's why appraisals view this as a very important thing. We need to have them to fix this. Mm -hmm. Water heater problem is very important. Yeah. Okay. House. What is the, what if the hot water, hot water going to the house and the hot water actually, you know, burn, burn people in mm -hmm. the house? Mm -hmm. That caused a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. okay. They'll tell you there's a lead, lead pen base, but no, not they don't have lead pen base. This is after 1978. So, is that 1978? The house? Like 84 or something. Like oh, 80. that's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. That's good because then you, you're covered with that. Water concert piping. So But this one is uh, installed after 1994. So we probably don't have it, but this just give you the disclosure that they, they have this kind of thing. Oh, but a carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide detector. Mm -hmm. So you should have one. Water heater, smoke detector, you see that right here. So they just tell you all oh, these things need to compliance. Water, uh, wire flood, we already talked about this. Wire flood, gotta be careful. Make sure go with the escrow company because that's, that's what the money should go to. Uh, affiliate business disclosure. Square footage. So this one is a nine hundred thirty-three. Oh, when they say the lot, is it included the other house? I mean, the other attached unit, or just like for that unit itself? Only for your unit. Only for your unit. Oh, okay. Only for your living space. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I mean the lot. Like they have like two thousand like something square feet for the lot. Is that like like my um? Oh yeah yeah yeah. Well, uh, I think that, that, that should be for you as well. Mm -hmm. That's you. That's you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you you have a very big backyard. Some part of it even was uh, still covered by something else. I think that still was uh, long before this seller was here. Oh, okay. I think the previous owners, one of them has a big dog lock in the backyard. Mm. Oh, we were here, wire. Mm -hmm. This has a uh, natural hazard certificate, I believe that's a receipt. Yeah, receipt. That's good. Oh, oh and I have a question. So, in terms of like the property tax, mm -hmm. so um, I think right now there was like one of the documentation mentioning about like the tax. It was the, I mean, the assessment right now is just like 400 something. Mm -hmm. But let's say after I buy this one for like 600 something K, will the tax going to increase, right? The property tax going to be increased on the new price that that's I buy? That's correct. Or Based on sales price, that's correct. And it's in the 1.25. 1.25? Oh, wow. That's a lot. Oh, that's one year. Mm -hmm. So it yeah. is 15 times 0.025. That's $8,125. And you pay every six months, so divide by two. Mm -hmm. That's $4,000 every six months. 
4062. Somewhere around there. You got the six men. Okay, so like around 700 per month. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it's not too bad right now as because the increasing of the house price. Mm -hmm. This you buy next year, it probably will go up to close to seven hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Do you think next year the price is going to increase? Because people keep talking about next year is going to crash or something. <laughs> uh, the crash on the certain areas might be. Uh, we don't really don't know. But also, yeah. if uh, this election Trump wins. Mm -hmm. Price will not in, will not decrease. The market is probably even gonna be better. Yeah. If Trump wins, if, yeah. Uh, if uh, this guy, you know, uh, Biden wins, it might drop the price. It might go back to the uh, lockdown because uh, he is so favored for lockdown. Yeah. <laughs> which is uh, not good. Oh. And, uh, yeah, that's also another good thing that you ask a little lower because if the price go down, then you you make money you, because you had a little lower price. Yeah. Um, but if they don't accept, then we, we really don't have anything to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah that's, that's one thing. Um, they don't accept, we don't have even one. That's like this. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Mari, um, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, because I have like another meeting as well for my work. So um yeah, I mean I'm gonna review like the, the documentation and then I will let you know and then I will confirm with you the price so that I will can sign the, the can you send me your the uh, pre approval letter? Yeah, yeah, I will forward I will forward the email to you for the pre approval letter. Okay, so we, we can get everything ready and then we can send it in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oops. Okay. That's probably everything. I think mm -hmm. that's probably everything. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think you have me a lot today. So thank you so much for your time today. Like, um, walk me through like the thing. Cause I mean, yeah, it's my first time. So everything's new to me, but I learned a lot today. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's just, we haven't finished, but yeah, I think the rest of it, we can read it through uh, once you get acceptance. And I think mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I guess, yeah, now I get like a better understanding. So I guess the process is going to be smoother from now because <laughs> I, I, I understand more. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for your time today. Okay, so uh, uh, let's get all these things ready and uh, we talk about a price soon and mm -hmm. we can submit that. Because I, I put today's day, so we really want to submit by today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me check. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. right, yeah. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Thank you so much for your time today. I'll right. talk to you soon. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Oh, can you also share with me, like, because you're recording the meeting, can you also share with me? So, I mean, in case later, if I forget anything, I just go back to this one. You know what? Uh, this is going to be safe, and I'll post to my Facebook account so that I'll share you, share you with a link. So you'll be able to see that everything through it. You just click the link, you go to my Facebook, and mm -hmm. you'll be seeing that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's all good then. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for your help today. Yeah, let's do it as soon as possible. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you so much. You have a good day. Okay. Yeah. Bye bye. Let me close this. Mm -hmm.